So Tracy, you're a director of the programme Doctors, um, but you've also made short films and, and other stuff. So tell, tell us a bit about your career. I started directing um, promos and little features for Sky Movies and then started my own company making behind the scenes for films and then progressed on to short films, writing and directing my own short films, basically with a view to directing full time. So I, all sorts of things, documentary, mockumentary, just working towards directing for TV and film. Fantastic. And I know you've worked with some quite big name actors and I do want to come back to that later. But first, should we talk about making a drama? So what, for, for a drama or film, what does a director actually do? Well, <laughs> one job. Um, no, the, the director basically um, comes in, reads the script, and it's their interpretation of that script. And you cast, and you speak to the production designers, and you speak to the DP, and then you, you basically put everything, all of those elements together, and make it all happen, I suppose. It's quite difficult to explain. Yeah, no, I can, I can imagine. But I mean, you know, a lot of people, anyone who's watched a film will, will see all the, all the kind of names at the, at the end on, on the credits. So what, what, you know, without diminishing anyone else's role, what, what are the kind of key roles, would you say, the, pe the people that you have to deal with on a, on a daily basis? You, well, there's, there's two areas, I suppose. There's prep and then there's the actual shooting. And so during prep, you mainly... Your, your main point of contact is your producer. And so for that, you go through the script and you talk about any slight amends that you want to do or your interpretation, make sure that they're kind of, you know, on board with what you want to do and it's not completely bonkers. For a programme like Doctors, you, you kind of have to be mindful about what's already there and you can't go wildly off um, in one or other direction. Whereas in, if you're making your own films, then you can really, you can do what you like. So you are under certain guidelines, really. Um, so, so a producer, I guess in kind of layman's terms, they look after the money. They, for something like Doctors, would they be looking after kind of making sure that, that, that your show sort of fits into all the other shows? Yeah, and so, and I mean, there is a budget. There's a huge budget restraint on something like Doctors. I mean, there's budget restraints on everything, but it is quite a tightly run program. So. That's mainly the line producer, that's all looked after. You know, if you, you, you can't have any mad requests, like you might say, I really need a stunt person for this, and they'll kind of laugh at you and go, I don't think so, that doesn't happen on Doctors. But, um, but you have to, yeah, you do have to stay within quite a strict, um, you know, parameters of what you can and can't do. But saying that, they're also quite flexible. So your producer, you can say to your producer, well, I, I really like to try this or can we do it handheld or can we do it and as long as it doesn't look completely wildly off from the other episodes so the audience don't kind of go oh, that's a bit weird um, then you are quite free to do you know put your mark on it as such great so so basically you look at the script then like you uh, what you said I really understood that you interpret it so basically you'd look at it and you'd you look at the scenes and say, well, this scene, might, I might use this or I might use these angles. So that's the first step. Yeah, the, well, the very first step is you get the scripts and you read the scripts a couple of times and then you'll go through and make your, your yeah, any script amends that don't quite, you know, you feel jar a bit. I suppose because I write as well, that is something that I'm quite, you know, strong on, whereas other people don't necessarily worry about that. They get the script and then they just do it as is, so um, I'm slightly anal about things like that. But, um, but it's all about, you know, just making sure it all flows and that you can, and the, and the main thing is, is visualising it in your head. So when you first read the script, you've got to be able to visualise it, because otherwise it's quite difficult. And is that, I mean, does that take practice? You, you literally kind of close your eyes, read the script, and, and, and you, 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 you see it in your head, how it's going to look. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a running story that, you don't, I mean, you just read it and you can visualise the people if they've done, they would have done character descriptions for you to read and so you can visualise the people and you can think to yourself you might have someone in mind that you might want to cast. I've heard some people say that actually it kind of can take over your life for a while, that you, you find yourself in a conversation sort of zoning out and, and kind of living an episode that hasn't been created no, yet. No, completely. You do that all the time because you're living and breathing it for however long prep time is. 
you completely immerse yourself in it and it's very difficult to do anything else. Great. So then once you've done that, so you've had your conversations with, with the producer, you've got an idea in your head how it's going to look, you've had the, the kind of arguments or negotiations about whether you can have a helicopter or a stuntman <laughs> or whatever. And then what's, what happens then? What's the next step? So you find locations that you need. Um, there's, there's, it's, at the same time, pretty much, you think about people that you can make offers to, actors who are reasonably well known that you can uh, say, right, we'd really like them for the role. And, and then you talk to the casting director and they'll, they'll go through some possibles with you and if they're likely to do it or not. And then you get like a, a little list of offers that you want and then you go through the list of people that you need to audition. And then in the meantime, you'll be going through the script again and making sure you haven't missed anything serial wise, because obviously you have to stick to a for any series TV. You have to look back and make sure you're up to date with where all the characters are and that sure. you don't kind of miss anything that's happened or, you know, you make sure you know what their up to date stories are for each character. So there's all those kind of considerations that you need. Um, and then you'll talk to the production designer as well. So there's lots of things going on at the same sure. time. So it sounds like a director, is, it's almost like, you know, that it's like an orchestra where you're the conductor, there's all, lots of people doing various things, but you're the person that makes it happen and, and it's your vision that creates it. Is that, is that about yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And there are different groups of people that you need to speak to pretty much on a daily basis during your prep. And they will be in diff no particular order, costume and makeup, the design department, locations team and casting and through that prep time you will spend you know equal amounts of time with those people to make sure that what you visualized in your head communicates to them so that on the shoot day you don't go oh my god that's not what I wanted. It's fantastic. So you yeah. have to make sure that you've got all of that and you keep going, you know, keep the communication going. That's the main thing, I think, is communication. So, for example, I mean, we, with the director of photography, camera person, whatever they're called, they, they, I mean, presumably they, well, they, you, you'll explain what you want, they'll set up the shot, you'd look at it and decide whether you like it or not. Because there must be a hell of a lot going on during, and, during the shoot. Yeah, a huge amount. Well, you don't, and usually, um, in television, this is completely different to film or short film, or documentary, you don't get to necessarily choose your DOP. Whereas if you're making your own short film or film, then you would. That, and that relationship is really key. In TV terms, um, you can request your DOP, but sometimes it'll, they'll be assigned and that's it, you've got your DOP and that's it. And they start on the day that you start shooting. So you don't have necessarily conversations with them before that, unless it's some kind of stunt or, you know, a special effect that you want, and you can probably have a chat with them on the phone, but they don't start being paid until the day of shooting. So that makes things interesting because you really have to be on it with how you want it shot so that when they come onto set, you're not going, oh, well, I wondered if, you know, maybe we could just try sure. this and try that. You really have to know exactly what you want. And do you have a shot list that you'd kind of tick shots off in? or Not really a shot list as such. I And I always thought that I'd do storyboards and I'd be, you know, but actually... I, and, and every director has a different way of doing it, where I take pictures of all my locations and all my scenes. So I'll have, and there's obviously set locations in a programme like Doctors, where you've got the doctor surgery and you've got the hospital and, you know, the police station. So there's all of those rooms I've taken photographs of. And so I'll, I'll have a big folder. So for each scene, each page of the script, I have a photograph that corresponds with that scene and where people are. And I know exactly where everyone's going to go. And nine times out of ten, I'll know where the camera's going to go. But then you're always open to interpretation and, the, and you get into the room on the shoot day and the, and the actors are going, oh, I, don't feel, I feel a bit more comfortable if I stood over there. So immediately your plan can go out the window. But sometimes that's a good thing. And sometimes you go, oh, actually, you know, and, and they're very good. They're quite laid back and they'll say, oh, is it better if I'm there? Is it less awkward for the room? Because sometimes the rooms are small and, you know, you know yourself from shooting and lighting, it's only, you can only work so much with a certain space. So sometimes you l literally have to say to them, I'm really sorry, but do you mind if you go there? And, um, and they're pretty laid back. If they know that you've tried what they would like to do and it hasn't worked, then they're pretty good about it. I definitely know about space constraints because I've got a kitchen sink behind <laughs> me. Um, but 
I mean, and this is going to be an odd question, but you know, it does seem that, that, that there's a lot to do to get a programme or a drama or a film made, you know, and, and w w when you watch a film, you know, the, the, the amount of work and effort and time and energy and money that's gone into it is extraordinary. But there's some good films and some bad films and some good dramas and bad dramas. So what do you think, what do you think makes something good as opposed to just being okay? It's the storytelling. It's a script, you have to have a good script that makes sense and that characters that you care about and really how you tell it has to make sense to the audience. So I guess a part of a director's role is to be able to sort of switch between having all this stuff going on and managing it and, and, and then be able to kind of be the eyes and ears of the audience that mm. haven't seen it before. So yeah. It's so tricky, right? Yeah, it is <laughs> tricky because you have to wear different hats and you also have to be very decisive you have to and and when you read that script first off and you have that picture in your head you've got to keep going back to that and trust what you felt in the first place about that and not be too distracted by other things that's interesting um, because that's the thought you had to start with and yeah things can progress and they can get you know the dop will come up with something and oh, the cameraman will suggest something oh we actually know that's much better but i think you always have to go back to that initial thought that you had so that you don't lose, you know, Sure, because if you change one thing, it could impact something else that you yeah. hadn't thought of and it could be a mess. So that, that's, that is really interesting. So going back to characters and, you know, obviously characters are, are created, well, created by a director, but they manifested through, through, through an actor. So how does that work being a director? You know, how do you kind of, obviously the, 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 the actors read the script, but how do the conversations work where you kind of get them to understand what you want their characters to be? You, well, you'll have, I mean, on Doctors, you'll have a chat with the actors, you know, over the phone, sort of two or three days before. If you haven't cast them, if they're offers, then you chat to them, you know, a few days before and say, have you got any questions on the script? This is how I saw the character. Have, what are your thoughts? You know, just to make sure you don't get them on the day and they go off on one thing and you're like, oh no, I didn't imagine that at all. So you just have to make sure that you're all, and you know, you say to them if there's any changes they want to make, you know, just conversational changes in terms of language and words that they just think, well, I wouldn't, really wouldn't say that. Um, and you just let them kind of do it because it's going to make them perform better if they're saying things that they feel more comfortable saying. Um, so there's a script issue and then also, yeah, how they portray that character has to be sort of along the same lines of what you imagined. Sure. Because I've wondered how, you know, you, you get actors that you get good actors and bad actors, right? But I wonder how, how much of an in influence a director has. You know, can a director turn a, turn a not so great actor into an amazing performance or, or, or a kind of, you know, a great actor into a not so great performance? How, how do... How does that actually work? You know, how much of it is left to the actor and how much of it is the director's influence? There's no turning a bad actor into a great performance. There's no, it's, it's very, very difficult to do that unless you tell them exactly how you want something to be said. And that's not really, you know, I, I wouldn't really want to do it. I'd, I'd give notes and suggestions about maybe saying something in a different way or trying something in a different way. But the whole point of an actor is that they then it's their interpretation of that character and the words. And, you know, you're kind of guiding them along the same as the whole thing, you know. But, um, yeah, you can't turn a bad actor. I mean, I've had a couple of experiences with that where you just end up cutting down their lines or, you know trying to trim them out <laughs> quite a lot and showing other people in the scene. Um, but, and I don't know about if you've got a great actor who then just isn't really interested in the part, then that's, again, you, there's not really much you can do about that if it's not someone that you've cast yourself, if it's been a, someone that's been suggested to you and you get them on set and then you just think, oh, they're really not feeling this, they're just doing it for the money. Then you try and have to, have to try and get them impassioned into it so that they will give more of a performance and that's about the other actors as well it's all of them kind of stepping up to make sure that that they because otherwise they've got nothing to play against and then that's mm. not fair for them i guess they say it's, it's the holy trinity isn't it it's, it's director actor script i guess and all of those things have to be good to for, 
for it to come together and, and create a great film. Um, so just talking about kind of on, on average, because I've just sort of wondered this really, for something like Doctors, how many ta takes does it take for an actor to get it right? Doctors has a very tight schedule for shooting and it's renowned for that. So you might come up against a day where you have 20 scenes a day, 23 pages to get done, and you might end up, it's been timed, so you've got 15, 20 minutes per scene, which is quite intense. Um, and you'll try and give time to the scenes that are slightly bigger with more people. If you've got what's called a two-hander with two people in the scene in one place, you'll try and bash it out as quickly as possible. But then if it's an emotional scene, you have to give more time to the actors to, to get into that. Um, so there's all sorts of things to think about there. But um, the take-wise, if you've got a scene where you've got the luxury of you've rehearsed it a couple of times and then you rehearse it for the crew and then you rehearse it on camera, then by then the actors will have gone through a couple of times so they, they'll be ready to go. So you might then get the best performance in the first take and providing everything technically is, is good and the camera boys are happy and lighting's happy and nothing's happened in the background that shouldn't have been there, then you stick with that one take and you don't need to do any more. But you have to be confident in your own um, conviction <laughs> to yeah. say, yes, let's move on. Because at the end of the day, everyone's looking at you and saying, can we move on? And you have to be confident because if you're not and you're slightly even wavering, then you have to go again. Because there's no point getting into the edit suite and then going, oh my God, I really wish we'd gone again. And you might have someone creep up behind you and tap you on the shoulder and go, yeah, the car in that background shouldn't have been there. So you have a huge group of people looking to you to say, yes, we can move on. No, we need to do it again. So yeah, it's quite scary. Tough. Yeah, it is <laughs> tough. And, and that's the pressure, I think, at the end of the day, yeah. is that um, you say, what does a director do? That's the key thing, is you have to know when to say, no, we've got enough, or no, we need to go again. And now this might be a hard question, I don't know, but you talk about how important the script is, and I really understand that, but how, how do you tell if it's a good script or not? I mean, what are you looking for when you read it? Does it jump out at you as being amazing, or, or what is it that you think makes, that, that you're looking for when you're, when you're reading a script? Well, I look for, I suppose when I first read a script, if I can imagine this happening in my head, as soon as you start reading and you can hear the people saying the words, then that's, that to me is a good script and it's something that you can't put down and you keep reading and reading and reading and, and you want to find out what's going to happen at the end. That's, that to me is a good script. Great. So it's, it's how you... Uh, uh, it, and people read scripts in different ways. So I would read, you know, that's how I read a script is, is I think of it visually and I try and imagine the people in it and what they look like and how they speak and, you know, and, and if it carries me on a nice journey. Sure. And you, well, I guess you even start imagining actors and what they would look like and, you know... Yeah, you hear a voice. I think if you've got a really well... Because you can have a lovely story, but the dialogue isn't great. So there's that element to it whereby the dialogue just needs a bit of work and, you know, a certain character's a bit weaker than another one or, you know, you need to develop a character more because you don't feel enough for them throughout the story and you feel a bit like, well, I don't really care about them, so I don't sure. mind if they fall off a cliff. But it, you've got to, I think, make sure that the characters are well developed that, so that people, you know, like we said before, about it, people are engaged with them and care about them enough yeah. to keep them going through the, through the journey. So that's, yeah, that's what I, I think is a good script. So basically, to be a good director, you have to be a bit mad. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you have to be able to hallucinate, <laughs> yeah, both visually yeah. and orally. Exactly. And uh, no, I, I, I absolutely really understand that. I mean, it'd be good to talk a bit about um, your, what you did before, because I'm, I'm really intrigued by that. You, you basically interviewed some quite big name actors. Mm. And how did you, you know, how did, did that make you nervous? How did you find that? So when I worked at Sky, I worked as a, a producer and presenter and part of the job was to do junkets whereby you sit in a room like this and, <laughs> and I'm doing the interviewing and the actor sits in and it's quite, it can be quite nerve-wracking because a lot of the time you only have six minutes and there's a massive 
line of people outside all waiting to ask the same questions as you and the actor's like oh my god I've done this you know 20 times already you know I'm so bored so is it because I, I imagine it's like the scene in um in uh, Notting Hill Notting Hill yeah, exactly exactly was, like that from the horse and hound yeah. Um, yeah and you've got someone there going you've got two minutes left or you, three minutes left you know and your actor's giving you the longest answer in the world and you've still got loads of questions to ask and you, you're going to run out of time so it's quite a stressful thing anyway so if you've got a big actor you know who you think to yourself is not really interested or you know is a bit kind of snippy or a bit grumpy then it's difficult and your first job is to try and make them comfortable and also try and make them aware that you've seen their film because some people will actually turn up to junkets and not have watched the film at all so um, that's tricky and some actors will try and trick you and fight to find out if you've actually watched the film or not and people get really horribly <laughs> caught out um, I can imagine. luckily I haven't <laughs> luckily I haven't had that happen to me but um but yeah, it is quite intimidating, especially if they are, you know, if you can tell that they're not happy to be there, then that's quite difficult because you've got a real challenge on your hands, not just to get your questions out in the time that you've got, but to try and engage them to the point where they will talk eloquently and, and give you some interesting answers and not just give you one, one sentence answers. Um, but for that, you need to have interesting questions and that's the big part of it is is preparation you have to make sure you've done your research on that actor and that you're confident going in that you've watched the film and that you know enough about it to be able to ask them intelligent questions because then they'll always respond if you ask them intelligent questions and not just go with the stock questions that everyone else will have asked so I quite like usually to go in with a, a slightly off the wall question to start with and, the, and it which usually takes them by surprise um, and they go, oh, OK, well, this is interesting. <laughs> or, you know, it could have an other effect. But, um, but yeah, that's, sure. um, it's, it can be intimidating, but it depends on how you go in, really, your body language and your, if you're quite open and interesting and interested, then usually it's not too hard. <laughs> I, I guess that's good practice for directing and deal with dealing with actors on, on set. Because yeah. it, I imagine the same rules apply. You have to kind of be in control to a certain extent, but but but. Yeah, it's different. It's different that. because they want to please you a lot of the time, and it depends on the level of actor, really. Um, you know, if you've got Helen Mirren, and she's kind of wants to do her thing and you know you want to give her little notes and stuff then some then you know that's fine it's your relationship is building your relationship with those people and they you know but nine times out of ten they want to look good and they want to please you as the boss so in a in a junket situation it's difficult because well, it's different because they know they have to be there so that's one thing <laughs> um, and they know that a lot of the stuff they're saying they've said you know 200 times before but also they're not acting so when you get an actor in an acting situation where they are doing a performance that's different to when they sit in an interview situation and they happen to be themselves which quite a lot of actors don't really enjoy that that scenario so that's another thing to consider some actors are absolutely fabulous at it George Clooney is a brilliant example of someone who is a brilliant interviewee and he is charming, clever, and absolutely engages the interviewer, and you have a lovely experience. And you know, he chats to everyone, cameramen and, and people around, and, and it's great. And then you'll get others who aren't such, you know, on such sure. good fun. <laughs> Must help that he's quite good looking as well. Just, yeah, it? it's not bad. <laughs> um, so my last, my last two questions really are, well, I can, I can I sort of put them into one question. What's the hardest part? of being a director and what's the most fun? One of the hardest things is being in prep and knowing that you want to shoot something in a particular way but knowing that you don't have the time or the budget or the resources to do that and then having to try and turn it into a, a scene with the same impact but with a, in a different way. On the floor the hardest thing is calling that or oh, making that call and saying we can't do this again we haven't got no time that's the one thing you're not really that's slightly different from film 
is that quite a lot of films you can run over half an hour or an hour and you ask the crew if that's okay and they were like yeah that's fine in tv that's not fine <laughs> <laughs> even five minutes is not yeah. fine um, so a lot of the time you have to and you have to make sure you give that time back that's not fine with the crew or, or the, the, they have with the crew strict... well and the, you know and yeah. the cast i mean they're the cast are working certainly on doctors they could be doing nine episodes at the same time so if sure. you run over for your section of their day then mm. they'll run over for the next section of their day which sure. will be with an, another director 25 minutes down the road and if if you're late letting them go then they're late starting sure. so that's the big consideration is is keeping to your timings and sometimes it's just impossible but you have to be aware that if you take off of somewhere you have to give it back somewhere else sure. so um, it means sh cross shooting something which is not ideal but that's quite a lot of the time that's how you end up catching up the time and there might be one take <laughs> and that's it yeah. it's cross shot in one take and that's the scene um, so just to, just to clarify, cross shooting is two cameras, so you're, you're picking up both angles at the same time. Also difficult is when an actor says, I'm not doing that. That's really difficult because you have the time restraints that you have and then you have to try and talk somebody around to saying something they really don't want to say or doing something they don't really want to do. And nine times out of ten you can solve that by having a conversation beforehand and just checking with everyone you know, that they're all happy and that there's nothing they, that jars them. And they might not find that out until they've done the scene. And then they go, you know what, I really don't feel comfortable saying that. So then you have a whole thing where you have to talk to the producer and say, can we change that to this? And are there any issues with changing that to this? And, <laughs> and everyone's saying, we really haven't got time. So that's quite difficult to, to try and then be diplomatic with the actor and say, look, I'm really sorry and normally would be able to do this, but on this occasion, could we just go with what's on the script? Great, and so, okay, so the, the most fun? The, I think the most fun, one of the most fun bits for me, I mean, I love all of it, I love all the elements of it, really. Um, but I think one of the most fun bits for me is casting. I love the casting process because in your mind, you've got, when you read those characters, you've got in your head a picture of who that, might be and what they might look like and how they might speak and then when you get to your auditions and someone walks in and that's you sometimes they'll just walk in and you go right that's it I had to they don't need to speak and you've cast them and then other times they it's someone that you just wouldn't even imagine and they give you a fantastic read and then you go actually no I've completely changed my view of what that person looks like and that's them and that's a really nice process because it's seeing that script come to life with that person and how they interpret it. And that's really interesting because that's not your speciality, but it's their speciality. So seeing that happen is sure. really, really good fun. And discovering people, you know, I really like when you have young actors that come in and they, this is their first bit of telly and you give them their first opportunity in TV. And then, you know, next few months you'll see them in other things. That's, so that's a really nice that's a really nice feeling.